Hi. I mean, how are you going? You know what was great? Arts and crafts as a kid. Ah, I miss it. There's nothing more entertaining than getting a bunch of toddlers, pasta, paint, and a litre of glue and mixing them all together in a classroom to release their creativity. And what made it even better was that the materials were usually food products, meaning if you ever got hungry, you could just eat some pasta or some glue. But arts and crafts is a bit different now as adults as building materials aren't really edible. And adult glue isn't quite the same either. It's also become quite gendered. The men don't play with pasta towers anymore. It's just not masculine enough. So instead, their arts and crafts involve danger and hitting things together with fire and hammers. So today, I'm gonna do some of this kind of crafting while also enjoying a wide selection of glues. Okay, now I'm not a very good blacksmith. I've only done it a couple of times and my products were pretty garbage. But regardless, I found it fun and want to do it again. And this time, I want to make something that looks impressive, that involves moving a lot of metal. Maybe a nice big double-headed axe. Do I need an axe? No. I've got a chainsaw for cutting trees. And I also don't need to chop firewood to keep warm, as my government is doing a great job of keeping the country nice and toasty by themselves. And now that I think about it, I'm not sure why double-headed axes exist. Yes, they look cool, but so does this axe pistol. Like, when would it actually be practical to have two heads? Like, unless you're a super talented lumberjack that's able to cut two trees at once with a beautiful front and back motion. But besides that, it just seems like extra weight to carry around and a great way to axe yourself in the face. So yeah, I kind of just talked myself out of building a two-headed axe, but I still want an axe that I can shake out the car window at crappy drivers. Now, my plan was to get my granddad's old hammerheads, flatten them both down into axe shapes, and then weld them together, and then slap on a handle. But then I remembered what he wrote in his will. And he might see this video, and I don't want to get in trouble. So, my backup plan is to go scavenge some stuff. All right, now usually when I'm loot hunting, I find it best to go after or before a storm so it feels more dramatic. Then, find a big old building, abandoned thing, or anything spooky and man-made. Now what I'm looking for is any scraps of metal left over from the building of this overpass. And what I really want to find is some eye bar or flat bar. So usually when I'm exploring and the location gets spooky and dark, I find it helps if you walk in with confidence and loudly say something to scare away any stoners or bandits. Hello? This is the police. I have a gun and I'm gonna start shooting. Okay, now I'm mostly just finding plastic rubbish, wood and rebar, but hang on, what's, what's that over there? Near the wall, is that, is, is that the piece of metal I placed there earlier for this video? Wow, what are the chances of finding that? So now I've got my piece of flat steel, the new plan is to follow this origami tutorial on making axes and just fold this metal bar over like a piece of paper until I get an axe. But first, I need to remove the rust. And the easiest and laziest way is to leave it marinating in vinegar overnight and then give it a nice bath in the morning. Now a lot of you might look at the leftover rust water and think yuck and throw it away, but you are wasting a miracle drink. My family usually decants the liquid into some jars and then we add some to our morning coffee. And we've been doing this for generations and all of us have lived long, happy lives free from iron deficiencies. Now the metal is nice and clean, I'm just gonna trace my ax onto the flat metal and then just cut it out with scissors. Ah, the funniest part of that joke is that it actually took me hours and hours of grinding to cut out the axe. And grinding is terrifying stuff, which is why I always wear the proper safety gear. Shoes, gloves, the whole lot. Yes, I reused the arseless chaps joke, but what do you want me to do? I ruined my best pair of Levi's for that original joke, and I plan on getting my money's worth. You're going to be seeing a lot more cheeks from me in the future. So now I'm going to bend the metal like this paper to form the axe head. And to help me do that, I'm going to weld an eye punch for the axe out of scrap rebar. And you're probably scared right now seeing me pick up this welder after the job I did on the spring shoes, but don't be. I've been practicing, and I've got them pretty good. And some people would even go as far as calling me an artisan of welding. 
And this piece is from a true artisan. His artworks look impossible, combining metal objects that contrast and complement each other so beautifully. Each world has an aura of uncertainty. Will it hold or will a light gust of wind cause it to fall apart? Some say that the fragile nature of his art is a representation of the artist's life. Uh, uh, excuse me, um, could, could I get another olive in my drink? Ah, uh, sorry sir, but we have a 12 olive limit per customer. Oh, okay, okay. And next. And this is my axe eye punch, not the worst weld. So in order to continue my axe origami, we need to head over to the big bad forge. Mostly bad. So, I'm placing it in the forge so that only the center thinnest bit heats up. Alright, so the middle section is nice and hot, so I'm going to take it out and give it the old bend around. And this is actually much easier than I was expecting. I just kind of hit it a couple of times in the middle and then on the top. And I have somehow managed to fold it over evenly and now have something that slightly resembles an axe, which for me is impressive. And I should probably stop now and say I'm done because it's definitely all downhill from here. As the next bit is going to be sketchy, is I need to connect the two sides using a tricky technique I have never done and am not qualified to do. The forge weld. And whenever you see people successfully forge weld on YouTube, they don't have the appearance of real people. They all look like kind of blacksmithing dwarves that somehow snuck out of Tolkien's universe into ours in order to start a YouTube channel. And they're always surrounded by heavy machinery and covered in soot like they sleep on a hotbed of coals with a hammer under their pillow. And this is intimidating because I only do one of these things. But I also know that all they're actually doing is getting stuff hot and then hitting it together hard enough until it's squished and sticks. So I'm going to give it a go. So I've gotten my axe nice and hot in the forge and I'm going to bring the two sides closer together and then pour this stuff, borax, in between which is meant to stop oxidation. Oxidation is the main thing that could screw me up as it prevents the two sides from touching and bonding. And I found it super interesting that without any oxidation at all, metals will just stick together. For example, in space, if you get two flat pieces of metal and touch them together, they will cold weld. So if this hot welding doesn't work out and Elon Musk is watching, do you want to maybe help a guy out? And the metal should be hot enough, so I'm going to give it a good pounding. And I love blacksmithing. It's great. One little hot piece of scale gets into your shoe and it instantly melts through your skin. Oh, so much fun. And my arms are also covered in fun little micro burns as well. And someone needs to invent something to prevent this. Like some kind of arm sleeves that you can move down to the bottom of your arm whenever you're doing a dangerous task. Now I'm pretty certain I have a mean layer of oxidation in between the two layers. So I'm going to add more borax and then do what I always do with my problems in life and just ignore it. And then, if it still persists, hit it some more with a hammer and just hope it disappears. And it looks stuck, but I can't tell if the two pieces have actually bonded and formed a solid piece of metal. I guess we'll find out when I cut it. For the next stage, I plan to re-split the edge of the axe and then slip the metal file in as the edge. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think the main piece of metal I use to make the axe out of has a low carbon content and will be quite soft and won't form a good sharp cutting edge. So by putting a high carbon file on the edge, I can get a nice, hard, sharp, resistant tip while also having a softer, more resistant metal for the body. The best of both worlds. Well, that's what this dwarf YouTuber told me anyway. So I'm going to add some more borax and do some more hitting. Now, even though the borax kind of looks like sherbet in bubbles in this really appetizing way, you must never eat it. Mostly because it can cause infertility, but if you don't want kids or you know you already have them, then hey, free vasectomy. And this file is stuck in there pretty good, but the axe is looking a little mank compared to its former self. So I've got some options. Either I throw it away and buy an axe online, or I take it into the garage and spend hours cleaning it up. And I could do with lengthening my videos, so I went with the later option. Okay, so I've spent hours cleaning and grinding the axe until it emerged from its cocoon as a beautiful butterfly. And some parts of the axe look pretty, and others don't. 
This is kind of how I feel about it. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Uh. Hmm. And after closer inspection, it looks like we've run into a problem. And when I say we, I actually mean me. You probably find my pain enjoyable. So it looks like the file has not properly welded into the rest of the metal, and there are some cracks here. And that's probably because of the incredible amount of oxidation I built up on the axe. But I reckon it's nothing an artisan of welding like me can't fix. Ignoring that though, the rest of the forge welding seemed to work really well, and the two sides stuck together without a visible seam. I hope those dwarf men are proud. So now, I need to decide what to do with the black scale that is covering the axe. And I'm modelling this after a viking axe, so if you look at pictures of their axes, they are always covered in scale. Like look at this one, it's completely covered in dirt. Those vikings were pigs, and that's why I've chosen not to spend hours and hours scraping it all off. It's not because I'm lazy, I'm just being historically accurate. So now onto my favourite and scariest part of the build, the heat treat. If there are any problems with the axe, this will be when it fails, hopefully dramatically on camera in slow motion. And halfway through heat treating the axe, it started to rain, so I smartly decided to cover my forge in a big piece of flammable wood. Okay, so just the carbon edge of the axe has reached a bright red temperature, so I'm going to quickly dunk it into some warm oil to harden the edge. And look at that, can we just admire how bad I am at putting the axe in the container? Wow. And the axe survived and now has a hardened edge, but it has some dodgy looking cracks, which I'm going to ignore and move on to the handle. So this is the wooden handle I'm using, which I um, crafted earlier while you were watching the rest of the video. And because I'm not happy with the axe head, I'm going to take the approach of every WOG family that owns a house in a crap area and overcompensate by blinging it out as a distraction. But first, I'm going to attach the head to the handle with a wedge to stop it flying away like my last axe. Now I'm going full viking and will do a leather wrap down the handle with some shiny nails. And to be authentic, I decided to get my leather straight from the source and went down to the supermarket and bought it from right next to the stake. And as I'm twisting the leather down the handle in a cross pattern, I'm using little nails to crucify it in place. And now for the finishing touch, which is something to catch your eye, but not like my last video. So I've decided to etch on my logo, and my options are to use acid or a Dremel tool. But after all that glue, I'm not sure I can handle any more substances. So I'm going to do it by hand with a Dremel tool. And now, just copy and paste it onto the other side, and wear Dunskis. And uh, I reckon it looks pretty good. Much nicer than the bent stick and bent screw I made earlier. Now, I want to test it. And I originally planned to just chop some wood with the axe, and it is great at doing this but it wasn't enough of a challenge. But then I remembered a video I saw earlier of the ultimate Chad Gary testing out his knife. And in my opinion, this is the only way to test things. So, I built a similar obstacle course to test the strength of my axe. Come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. Come on, Gary. Nice job.
Honey. Oh, are you a mindless consumer that loves buying crap on the internet? Well, today's sponsor, Honey, is perfect for you. You know, when Honey was first found by mankind, it was only utilized as a sweetener to make dirt more edible, but now it does so much more than that. Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes on the internet and applies them to your cart. Here, let me, let me show you how this works. All you do is you put Honey on your computer like this, and then it's just there, always on your computer. And then whenever you do anything, like go to your favorite sites like eBay or AliExpress, when you get to the checkout, Honey scans for coupons and saves you money. Let's say you go to buy some paper towels and ant spray, and then bam, Honey saves you $45. Ah, oh, that feels so, so great. And you know, over 17 million people have done exactly this and put Honey on their computer and saved $2 billion in savings. So install it for free today with just two easy clicks at joinhoney.com slash I did a thing. That's joinhoney.com slash I did a thing. And their name's so nice, they made me say it twice. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other stuff.